Party people! Tony Rowe here. Uh, confession to make. I was sort of taunted into making this video. Um, I, uh, a video. I shouldn't say this video. I chose what to, to talk about in this video. But, uh, got home from work. Of course, starting to pound a Chipotle burrito. And I see this on Twitter. So shout out to Professor Maverickster. Whatever you're a professor of, I'm sure you're great at it. Uh, this is all true. And then uh, the, the now legendary uh, Anton Squared Me responded with this very rude comment. And that's not true, Dan. All right? I do, actually, most of it's true. I, I do still love you guys, but I also really do love Funky Bass Licks and Squid Ink Pasta. You haven't lost me, though. So uh, to Dan... <laughs> uh, no, I'm just, you know I love you, Dan Okay uh, I, I actually had an idea for this video <clears throat> uh, I received a question on, on one of my other videos the, the opening theory video I did on the Catalan A guy asked a question uh, That after d4, d5, c4, e6, knight f3, knight to f6, g3 uh, bishop b4 check. He asked, uh, this is the line that I covered, and then bishop uh, d2, bishop d6, bishop g2, uh, c6 was my main re recommendation. And uh, he asked if this if this line was possible from a semi-slav move order. And uh, it's a it's it's kind of a good question. See, we we obviously started with a queen uh, queen's gambit decline, but you can imagine, given this pawn formation, that this line might also be possible. For instance, after c6, knight f3, knight f6, g3, e6, bishop g2, and then bishop b4 check, bishop d2, bishop d6, and, and we're here. So, uh, not an unreasonable question, but then it got me thinking maybe an even better question is, if you're building a semi-slav repertoire, what repertoire considerations do you need to understand when choosing between starting with e6 or c6? And when I mean the semi-slav, I mean the position that occurs after, let's say, c6. I would say that's the more classical way to reach this position. Knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, and then e6. I consider this sort of the main tabia of the semi-slav. Black has played e6 and c6 to bolsters d5 pawn. White places knight, knights very classically on f3 and c3. And black has knight f6 in as well. And this is the main sort of semi-slav position from which... White almost universally chooses to go bishop g5 or e3. And maybe we'll get into a little bit about your choices there as well after. But I wanted to understand what wanted everyone else to... I understand it, I think, okay. But I wanted everyone else to understand, if you're just getting into the semi-slav or you're just starting to understand opening theory, what your considerations are on whether or not you should start with e6 or c6. Because there are some differences. So let's let's start. Let's get into it. Uh, first side note is that I actually think D takes C4 is a kind of a, crimic, crimic, cr a criminally underplayed move. Um, it's been played a lot by the World Championship challenger Fabiano Caruana lately, but I also just think it's a move that if I were preparing to ever meet D4 with D5, I would strongly consider. I think white players very rarely see it, and they prepare lazily there, and I think there are more than adequate ways to defend the black position and make things interesting after D takes C4. So if you're, like, on the fence about the semi-slav and you're maybe thinking, eh, maybe there's something better, at least consider D takes C4. Or just as a surprise weapon. But anyway, okay, so let's start with E6. So, of course, if white decides to go something like knight F3 you can go either c6 or knight f6, and then uh, after knight to c3, for the most part, you're going to get to go uh, c6. There is one distinction here that after knight f3, knight f6, g3, you're in a cattle and proper. And then, of course, uh, this bishop b4 check idea, obviously, from my last video, would, would still completely apply. Um, one difference is that if you start with c6 here, g3 is probably a little bit less exciting. And the reason that's the case is that with the pawn on c6 already, it first of all blunts the long diagonal, but also after d takes c4, uh, again, we see the, the long diagonal is blunted, but the, the pawn is ready to come to b5 and is also already protected uh, to defend the c4 pawn. So 
For instance, the main line here is bishop g2, and then black can go b5 right away. And the point is kind of that, like, let's say after castles, uh, bishop b7, having c6 and bishop b7 and b5 in is probably better for holding onto the pawn on the queen side than having not one of these moves and knight f6 inserted. Knight f6 is a perfectly great developing move, but does not contribute to being very stubborn about keeping the c4 pawn in any way. And after a4, usually people will go a6 here, but black doesn't even have to in this case. Um, knight d7 or knight f6 I think would be perfectly good moves here. But the point is that one of the things about playing the, the Slav and the Semi-Slav semi is not only are you bolstering your center with c6, even in this position, you're also sort of preparing to go d take c4 because now b5 is, is a pawn that's protected. So just something to consider. So after c4, e6, knight f3... The choice on whether or not you go knight f6 or c6 probably depends on what you feel most comfortable with in the case that white does not play knight c3. Because either way, if if he goes knight c3, you're getting a semi-slob. But so on this on this move, you kind of have to look and see what white's alternatives are. And the main ones would be going to a Catalan or playing bishop g5 straight away, which would lead you to a queen's gambit declined. Not that that's bad, it's just probably not what you want. So if you want to reach a semi-slob very proper and, and stick to kind of positions that resemble a semi-slav i'd probably go with c6 here when g3 is not all that common at all because i think d takes c4 is probably quite adequate um white does have a couple of options instead there's queen to c2 and e3 those are the main ones uh white can also go knight b to d2 usually that means that he's gonna go uh, with a setup that looks something like this, some kind of like Coley Zuckertort style setup. And one thing to keep in mind here is that black is free to kind of go knight f6 in all of these positions, and 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 you're going to generally get something that would be covered in like a semi slob book. This this would be like early alternatives where white tries to avoid the main position. <coughs> um, but but it's also possible in a lot of these positions for black to go into Stonewall. Uh, type structures as well because you haven't committed the knight on f6 for instance after queen c2 and e3 this is uh, a very reasonable option a against e3 especially i think it makes a little bit more sense probably because white has not uh white has sort of precluded himself from from putting the bishop on f4 which might be kind of annoying for for the uh the stonewall player but in any case just something to consider so i would say against knight f3 if you want to reach a, a semi-slav probably start with with c6 now the main snag i think with with starting with e6 when you're trying to reach a semi-slav is what you do after knight to c3 and reason being is that if you go knight f6 then you're asking to uh again of course knight f3 just transposes straight away after c6 and you're in the semi-slav white's main alternatives are c takes d5 and bishop g5 and it's hard to get into semi-slav-ish positions after either of those moves. This is just a huge main line, and especially at club level, you're going to run into this like 90% of the time, I would guess. C takes d5, c takes d5, bishop g5. And then uh, bishop e7, c6, and knight b to d7 will all lead you into sort of exchange queen's gambit declined uh, positions. This is a very popular line. It's also somewhat annoying to play for black. Um... It's not bad, I don't think, and in recent years, I would say Black's cause has been bolstered more than maybe if you started to play this position, let's say, a decade ago, but if you're a strictly semi-slot player, you're probably not going, not going to enjoy this position that much. Most people, and by the way, you might be wondering, okay, if that move is so, so annoying, C takes D5, why not play it here? The reason is, of course, that like after Knight to C3, Black doesn't have to allow Knight F6 bishop g5 he can play c6 right away and bolster the pawn and ask white where he's putting the dark squared bishop white really wants to go e3 but you want to get the dark squared bishop out of the pawn chain first a lot of people go bishop f4 but this is less exciting than than putting it on g5 white also doesn't have a great way to stop black from developing the bishop to f5 Usually he can do that first by going e3, bishop d3, but in this case, because the e-pawn has already scooted its way to d5, black can rush out with this move. So 
totally uninspiring is is three c takes d5 just just for the record now after knight c3 most semi slot players if they start with e6 will play c6 here and that's to avoid this c takes d5 and bishop g5 stuff in this case black can just take with the e pawn and we're back where where we just started and after c c6 uh there aren't very many independent alternatives White can go knight f3, and then you're in a semi-slav after knight to f6, like usual. And uh, he can go e3, which is, again, this would be considered like one of the sidelines of the semi-slav. It's also possible, for again, for black to go into to the stone wall. Uh, or there's the main reason why I think some people don't like this uh, so-called triangle move order, and that's the Marshall Gambit with e4. And because black has neglected to play knight f6 and cover the e4 square, white is free to bust out with this. And he's basically looking to just have a central structure with this well-centralized knight and slightly more space if black does nothing. Uh, as such, black is sort of committed to go into this very forcing line that starts with bishop b4 check bishop d2 and then queen takes d4 the trick being that bishop and you know it's kind of a trade i'm not hanging this bishop on b4 and this is the main line and uh, also why it's called the gambit because white's down a pawn but white has very ample compensation in the form of uh the lead in development black's only uh, developed piece is this highly exposed queen on on e2 very often, white goes even further by gambiting the pawn on g2 with a move like uh, bishop e2. It's totally unsafe to take it right away, but uh, in general, this thing is hanging for quite a while. Uh, and also, black has a very serious issue in that it's very hard for him to castle uh, his king away because of this extraordinarily strong dark square bishop. Black has gone out of his way to place all of his pawns on light squares and then trade off the dark square bishop for a knight leaving white with 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 uh, the only dark squared bishop and some pretty serious uh, dark squared weaknesses. Uh, it, it's quite funny, actually. There's this lingering threat of white going bishop to f8, the point being that king to f8, king takes, is, is met by queen d8 mate. So bishop f8 uh, threatening bishop g7 is a funny idea. <coughs> um, okay. And th that's basically the main move order considerations if you're starting with e6 you have to decide whether uh, knight f3 you're pretty much going to get something that resembles a semi-slav after after c6 or knight f6 it just depends on whether or not you want to allow bishop g5 or you want to go c6 and and keep these these stonewall ideas in play but uh, on occasion you know having this knight on f6 is more useful than the pawn on c6 so it's, it's sort of a trade-off uh th the real thing is again after knight c3 you either go knight f6 and allow the exchange queen's gambit declined, which in my opinion is not to be recommended, just on practical grounds, or you go c6 and then uh, allow e4. Now, starting with c6, on the other hand, this is this would be like a more classical uh, Slav move order. Uh, the most popular move here is knight f3. White can also start with knight c3. Uh, after knight f3... Black can really start either way. After c6, we've already covered this position. Again, queen c2, e3, knight b to d2 would be the main alternatives on the way to the main semi-slot position that you would have to look at and understand. And after knight to c3, again, we could go e6, and we, we would be back in, in territory we already covered. You'd have to work out what you're doing against the Marshall Gambit. But black can also go knight f6 in this position, uh, which is somewhat different with the pawn on c6 compared to the pawn on uh, e6. Again, knight f3 leads you right into a semi-slav. That's what you're looking for. The main alternative here is going e3. And then e6 will lead you into a semi-slav. But this is a very uh, well-known sort of position after knight f3, knight b to d7, called the Moran system. And white generally goes uh, queen c2 or bishop d3. Um, yeah, lots of theory here. This is like the main alternative for white compared to going into, uh, let's say the main semi-slot position with, with knight f3, e6, and then bishop g5 or e3. And of course this position can also be reached 
uh, this position with e3, e6, knight f3 can also be reached by knight f3. You reach the main semi-slav tabia, and then you go e3. So, uh, where the hell was I? <laughs> uh, knight f6. Yeah, knight c3, and then e6 is is where you are, where you want to be, and then after e3, you have to sort of decide again what you're doing here. You can either go into the semi-slav with e6, but I do notice an awful lot of authors are choosing to do something else. Uh, bishop f5 right away, a6 going into a Chebonenko slav when white is committed to e3 already, or uh, bishop g4. I would say the main thing about reaching the semi-slav via the c6 move order that's considered a downside is that it does allow the exchange slav. So right, right away... White can choose to kind of sterilize the structure with c takes d5, c takes d5, and then either knight to c3, knight f3. I mean, you basically reach, uh, you know, this style of, of exchange slot position, which a lot of people object to if you're trying to win, especially against a lower-rated opponent. The issue is, is that white exchanges on d5 before you can take back with the e-pawn and imbalance the structure. So if he just takes right now, it's a completely symmetrical structure. Neither side really has a lot of pawn breaks. And so it comes down to like this long maneuvering phase in a sort of a sterile position that, that some people find kind of annoying. If Most semi-slav players are, tend to be uh, pretty combative. The main lines of the semi-slav are quite sharp. If, if, we, if we zoom forward, there are a lot of options here, but... Like, for instance, the main line has always sort of been bishop g5, and then there's two main choices here. There's the Cambridge Springs with knight b to d7, but we're, we'll ignore that. The The main options were, would be going to the Botvinnik semi-slav with d takes c4, e4, b5, e5, h6, bishop h4, g5, knight takes g5. You can see things are starting to get quite weird. Uh, and then knight b to d7, and then g3 or e takes f6 are the main moves, and you know, this position is is one of the most complicated in all of chess. It's it's sort of played out these days, but for a long time, this was like where all of the crazy people were going. Um, nowadays, people generally prefer to flick in h6 first, and only after bishop h4 do they take, um, making it a real gambit for white after g5. Now, of course, knight g5 doesn't do anything because e5 isn't in, bishop g3, and then b5. So black chooses to hold his, his pawn uh, in this variation, but the downside is that white has a massive center, and like black's king side is sort of loose, and black's queen side is sort of loose, and like a d5 break uh, opening up everything is, is sort of looming. So those are your main options from the, the semi-slot position with bishop g5. And then uh, e3... Knight B to D7, and then uh, again, white is sort of going queen to C2 or bishop bishop D3. Um, so I, I know that was fast. I'm, I'm sort of speaking fast. I wanted this to be more of a bite-sized video, but um, again, this is something that semi-slot players have to deal with. If this is an opening that you're interested in, uh, un unraveling the move orders and finding out the way that you like to reach the main position the most that either, let's say, minimizes the positions you have to learn or cuts out all of the crap that you hate uh, is, is sort of an important facet to, to playing the semi-slav. And in my experience, you know, especially at the club level, you'll see a lot of these like alternatives, and so you have to decide which ones you like playing against the best. And... You know, it sort of comes down to, do you want to allow the exchange slav? And if the answer is no, then you must play e6 here. And then if you play e6, you have to decide, am I going to allow the, the exchange queen's gambit declined, or am I, or am I going to allow the martial gambit? And vice versa, if you say, okay, I hate playing the exchange queen's gambit declined, and I find the martial gambit very dangerous, or I'm just too lazy to learn the theory there, then you go, okay... I have to play c6, and I must allow the exchange slav, but, or really what it means is you must find something you like playing against the exchange slav, which can be a challenge. So uh, I hope that this video was helpful. I know it's a little bit narrow, but um, this, the, the uh, semi-slav is a popular opening, and it's a, a very good one. 
and move order issues like this come up in every opening. I hope to do some some more of these quick videos about understanding opening move orders um, and understanding like the repertoire implications of them for people who are maybe thinking about taking these openings up. Um, let me know if you like them uh, in the comments if you think they suck and it's like you hate if everyone hates them overwhelmingly then I won't do that anymore. Um, similar to how I actually changed my pieces before this video. So all of you uh, pieces naysayers, even though I really love uh, these pieces, uh, apparently no one else does. So <laughs> um, I, I will not be using those pieces in my videos. You guys win. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, I know it's been a while. Shout out to all the party people out there, all the Tony Rowe fans. I'm really sorry. Uh, part of it is that I have a girlfriend again, and ladies take up a lot of time, and uh, I've been playing a lot of music lately. Um, I'm in sort of a shitty garage band, and I've just been like really into bass and music and trying to become a better musician and learning about recording and all that kind of stuff, so that takes up a lot of time, and work is like super busy, so I'm sorry. I, I hope to do more chess content, um, especially in the form of these like quicker videos and some rapid games and uh, I, I have some opening theory video, videos that I'm prepping, but they take a long time. So just uh, hang on. I'm not dead. I'm alive. I'm still making videos. Calm down. Uh, and I hope you guys liked it. Uh, bye.